Hello students. So today discussion is about bases. So we already completed the discussion about acids. What are acids? The, uh, the substances which have a capacity to release H plus ions. Now when it comes to the bases students, the bases are the particles or the, sub the substances which have a capacity to release OH minus ions hydroxyl ions according to the Arrhenius theory they are called as bases acids turn blue litmus red color but bases turn you know, uh, red litmus blue color that means bases they show complete opposite behavior uh, towards the acids so students look at here some bases are soluble in water they are called as alkalis this is the main point students so not all the bases they do not dissolve in water we have the classification of bases like how we have the classification of acids same we have the classification of bases also first of all on the basis of the strength so what is the what is the meaning of strength strength means the ability the capacity to release oh minus ions is called as strength students so bases undergo dissociation in aqueous medium dissociation means ionizing splitting of the molecule into opposite ions so the extent of dissociation of a base in an aqueous solution is called the is called as the strength of a particular base same like the strength of an acid we have the strength of a base so we have the same uh, classification strong base and weak base so you define what is strong base a base which has a capacity to release uh, uh, a maximum number of oh minus ions or the its extent of ionization is if the, either it is 30 percent or more than 30 percent is called as strong base and if it is below 30 percent that is called as weak base so the bases which almost completely dissociated in an aqueous solution to produce high concentration of hydroxide ions high concentration means more number of oh minus ions are called as strong bases example potassium hydroxide koh or sodium hydroxide naoh these are strong bases and when it comes to the weak bases the bases which undergo partial dissociation partial dissociation means only limited number of oh minus ions only release that is called as a weak base and examples of ammonium hydroxide nh4oh uh, chromium hydroxide iron hydro many are there many examples which can comes under weak bases so next on the basis of concentration so we have a concentrated base and dilute base you already know what is concentrated acid and what is concentrated uh, like uh, what is diluted acid so here concentrated base means uh, the substance a solution which contains more quantity of a base and less quantity of water it is called as concentrated base and what is dilute base more quantity of water and less quantity of base opposite so that is dilute and we can define this concentrated and diluted with reference to the with relative to the other solution so here you can see here relatively a base solution having a relatively high percent relatively meaning by comparison with other solution of base in its aqueous solution is called as concentrated and less percentage of base in its aqueous solution is called as a dilute base so on the basis of acidity for acids we have basicity what is basicity the number of h plus ions are released by one molecule of an acid is called as basicity here we have acidity that means the number of OH minus ions are released by one molecule of a base is called as base city. Why? Because bases release OH minus ions as well as according to the Arrhenius. So we have monoacidic base, diacidic base as well as triacidic base. What, what is monoacidic base? Uh, a base which can release only one OH minus ion is called as monoacidic base. If it can release two OH minus ions that is called as diacidic base and if it can release three OH minus ions that is called as triacidic base. So so here look at the example NaOH, it can release how many OH minus ions in its aqueous medium? Only one Na plus and OH minus ion only and calcium hydroxide CaOH taken twice, it can release how many OH minus ions students? CaOH taken twice can release two OH minus ions as an aluminium hydroxide, it can release how many OH minus ions? Aluminium hydroxide can release three OH minus ions, so this is the classification in terms of acidity. So general methods of preparation, how to synthesize a base, what is a base? In general bases are oxides or hydroxides of metals are called as bases. How do we get the oxides of metal? Simple, when metals react with oxygen, yes or no? as simple as it is. Potassium react with oxygen, what do we get? Potassium oxide. Sodium react with oxygen, what do we get? Sodium oxide. Magnesium react with oxygen, 
Mg plus O2 to Mg plus O2 gives rise to 2MgO. All these metallic oxides are basic in nature, yes or no, students? So that's why when a metal reacts with oxygen, it produces a respective oxide, which is a basic nature. So as well as when these metals, when they react with water, look at here, active metals. Active metals means highly reactive metals. Do you think all the metals, do they react with water? We drop uh, gold in water, Does it? do you think is it reactive? No. So only active metals, highly reactive metals. Uh, drop iron in water, is it reactive? It, it is reactive, but it is very, very slowly reacts as in the formation of rust. So active metal means highly reactive, suddenly it will react. The moment when sodium is dropped into the water, what will happen students? A big explosion happens, yes or no? What is happening here? It forms the respective hydroxides and it releases hydrogen gas as well. So hydroxide means it is a base. So the reaction of metals, active metals with water produces sodium hydroxide and the respective hydrogen gas is released. So here iron is example is taken, iron plus H2O steam. Normal water, do, can we expect the compound suddenly? No. With steam, what is steam? H2O only, but uh, vapor only, but still high temperature. That is the difference between a vapor and steam. Steam has high temperature. At these conditions, iron reacts to produce iron oxide and the respective hydrogen gas will be released. So metals with plus oxygen, metals plus water. And we have one more technique that is metallic oxides plus water. It's a metallic oxide is anyway basis when they dissolve in water when they react with water what do they form the respective hydroxides which are direct arrhenius bases calcium oxide plus h2o gives rise to calcium hydroxide magnesium oxide plus h2o gives rise to magnesium hydroxide sodium oxide plus h2o gives rise to sodium hydroxide ultimately we can get the arrhenius bases which can release oh minus ions which are hydroxides so next we have physical properties of bases let's see one by one these are also very simple uh, they are bitter to taste. All bases are bitter in taste and they are soapy to touch. You know, they are very slippery, very soapy to touch. And many bases are soluble in water. Bases that dissolve in water are called as alkalis. This point in the beginning we discussed. The bases which can dissolve in water are called as, are treated as alkalis. Bases turn moist red litmus paper into blue litmus paper. That is a characteristic color change. Uh, bases with litmus, they can change red litmus to the blue. Why moist? Why? Because bases can release OH- ions in uh, H2O only in the presence of dry base. Does it? No, it will not. Even acid also, it, it will not. So definitely aqueous medium should be there. So solutions of bases in water are good conductors of electricity. That's obviously about this electricity, conduction of electricity also we discussed in terms of acids. Why? Because these bases, when they dissolve in water, they release the respective hydroxyl ions and the respective metal ion is there, hydroxyl ions are there and they act like as a carriers of the electricity. That's why the solutions of these acids as well as bases are the good conductors of electricity students. And it turns colorless phenophthalein to the pink color. So the color change for bases in litmus, blue to red. In phenophthalein, pink color. In methyl orange, yellow color. These are the main color changes. Bases are used usually oxides or hydroxides of metals. Yes or no? Calcium oxide, magnesium oxide, sodium oxide or calcium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide, hydroxide sodium hydroxide. They may generally oxides or hydroxides are bases. Bases are corrosive to skin. They should not be touched by the hand. Like acids, bases are also very corrosive, mainly strong bases. So we cannot touch by the hand. We cannot hold it for so long. It can burn the skin. It can cause burning effects on the skin. So that is what you, ha you have to be very careful while dealing with these acids or bases in the lab. So next we have chemical properties of bases. Chemi like how does it react? So sodium hydroxide which is NaOH and potassium hydroxide they do not decompose on heating. However, they will melt when they strongly heated. This point is very very important point students. Why? Because these are strong bases. These are strong bases. So they have very high force of attractions. So they cannot release that OH- when you heat. So then how can it release OH- and what qualifies it as a strong base? When you add in water, it releases. In general, if you heat, it will not release. It is simply melting. Understood? This is the main point to remember. Ammonium hydroxide, but other weak bases, we can uh, decompose them. Ammonium hydroxide decomposes rapidly on warming to form ammonia gas and water. By, by slight temperature also, ammonium hydroxide by heating, it will be decomposed to the respective ammonia as well as, well as water. We, we all know the uses of ammonia which is used as a fertilizer. And this is a decomposition reaction of ammonium hydroxide which is a weak base. 
and all other metallic hydroxides decompose on strong heating to form their respective metallic oxides and water. All the other metallic hydroxides because of the strong heating they can form the respective oxides as well as water. Here the example is given as calcium hydroxide. If calcium hydroxide is decomposed what does it form students? Calcium oxide plus H2O the respective metallic oxide. It is reversible reaction as yes no, than the uh, previous reaction. Look at here. This is a reversible reaction. So, we can make it reverse and magnesium hydroxide it forms magnesium oxide plus water. So, that is how we can synthesize uh, the respective oxides also from hydroxides. Neutralization with acids right when an acid react with base what is the resultant reaction is called as neutralization reaction. So, uh, what is the skeleton of the reaction acid plus base gives rise to salt and water it depends upon uh, that the salt depends upon the type of acid type of base which is taken. So, sodium hydroxide the common reaction reacts with HCl to form to form NaCl and H2O. So, this is uh, salt and H2O reaction with metallic salts. So, the bases when they react with metallic salts they undergo double displacement reaction students double displacement exchange of ions takes place from both the compounds you can see what what we can expect here you answer sodium reacts with chlorine sir so can sodium react with copper do metals metals combine no like com chemically no physically okay so sodium reacts with chlorine to form sodium chloride and uh, uh, copper react with hyd uh, hydroxide to form the respective copper hydroxide so double displacement reaction and to write the reaction you should know the valency of the element at least if you for if you don't know the valency by in the chemical formula you can find the oxidation numbers so reaction with ammonium chloride this is also a salt ammonium chloride so sodium hydroxide reaction with ammonium chloride it produces the respect you answer what we can expect double this is also double displacement reaction sodium displaces ammonium ion yes or no and it attacks the chlorine to form the respective sodium chloride and the resulting am ammonium ion reacts with the remaining OH minus ions and what does it form ammonium hydroxide so this these are all double displacement reactions next uses uses of bases so first of all ammonia the main use uh, from these bases is ammonia coming from ammonia ammonia formula is NH3 where it is used the primary use is fertilizer ammonia is used as a fertilizer for the growth of the plants and from ammonia we can also synthesize many other fertilizers also like ammonium phosphates ammonium sulfates all ammonium chlorides all these so production of fertilizers like ammonium and nitrate salts used in the manufacture of nitric acid and neutralize the acid in the petroleum industry also this particular ammonia is being used as well as to prevent the premature coagulation in the natural or synthetic latex synthetic latex means students you know in the rubber industry also the moment when they collected all the liquid part of the rubber so if we, if we keep it aside it will solidify it will coagulate so to stop that they added so they will add some amount of ammonia to that so it will it will stop the coagulation and it will make uh, the particular rubber as liquid form only in the liquid form only in that purpose also this ammonia is used and this use is use is very very important so next aluminium hydroxide what is the formula of aluminium hydroxide ALOH taken thrice so manufacturing of other aluminium compounds and to make gastric medicines antacid tablets like if you feel like indigestion kind of gas gastric problems you know there also this aluminium hydroxide is used mainly it is made up of magnesium hydroxide but in the preparation of that particular acid this aluminium hydroxide is also being used and calcium hydroxide CaOH taken twice is calcium hydroxide to make cement mainly in the cement industry why because cement coming from lime, limestone which is calcium carbonate and uh, lime water neutralize the acidity of the soil and the application of sewage treatment. So for example a soil a particular soil is so acidic you already know some plants grow in some conditions yes or no everything in this on this planet earth live in, in, a, in a particular pH value similarly some plants grow in a particular pH. So students if the particular soil is acidic and we need to make it neutralize how to do it we can we can add some base to it yes or no can we add whatever the base like sodium hydroxide no it might be harmful for the plants also. So we should add a particular base to neutralize the soil as well as it is good for the plants also there we have we can use calcium hydroxide so acid plus base what we can get neutralized yes or no the acidity of the soil will be reduced or not and it doesn't affect the plants also so that's what the effect students next sodium hydroxide this is also very very important compound NaOH sodium hydroxide used in the manufacturing of soaps detergents and 
cleaners like detergents cleaners means washing soda and sodium carbonate baking soda nhco3 can also be synthesized from this sodium hydroxide next magnesium hydroxide mgoh second twice and this is also called as milk of magnesia students mainly used in antacid tablet suspension of magnesium hydroxide in water are used as uh, an antacid tablet to relieve the that pain of digestion indigestion used as an anti perspirant armpit deodorant right anti perspirant uh, perspirant means students like in order to avoid the sweat Persi perspiration means what sweating anti perspirant means to avoid the sweat we can use like deodorants right so and as a non hazardous alkali to neutralize the acidic waste water so neutralization reaction like the same we discussed acid plus base gives rise to salt and water the reaction in which an acid reacts with a base the reaction in which an acid reacts with base to form salt and water as a product as a product and this reaction is called as neutralization reaction it, this reaction also double displacement reaction hcl plus naoh gives rise to nacl plus h2 indicators indicators we have two indicators common indicators and universal indicator common indicators means litmus methyl orange phenolphthalein uh, in acids what's the color change of litmus blue to red bases red to blue methyl orange red and in bases uh, it is yellow and phenolphthalein in in acids it is colorless bases it is pink color next universal indicator universal indicator students it is a very sensitive indicator like it has many color ranges from uh, ranging the values from 0 to 14 so neutral is green in color and strong acid is red in color strong base is like very purple bluish in color so it, it, it is composed of different color ranges based on different colors also you can identify whether the particular substance is it a not just an, as an acid is it a strong acid or weak acid or a neutral substance a strong base or weak base also so that is what the universal indicator composed of many dyes and colors it's a mixture of organic dyes which gives the different colors with different kinds of acids bases and salts this is more sensitive than the other common indicator this is more effective students by the color change different changes you can even identify strong and weak acids strong and weak basis also color changes are strong acid means harm like uh, 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 bright red in color like weak acids means strong acids means bright red in color weak acids means like almost like you know yellowish orange uh, color uh, neutral means green color and like weak base means like small uh, uh, pale bluish kind of color strong base means purple color like almost bluish purple color so these are the color ranges uh, in the universal indicator so that's all students about bases we discussed about what is base like uh, what are the classifications of bases properties physical properties chemical properties as well as the uses of all these bases so uh, what is left in this chapter is sorts that we'll discuss in the next video thank you students